Welcome to the second episode of Cherry Coke with Coach. Uh, another exciting episode ahead for you guys. As you can see, we got three gentlemen around the table that we'll get to in a minute. But, you know, first we got to, uh, me and Kip got to figure out what's going on in the world. So, um, first I just want to thank everybody for listening to the first episode. Um, all the feedback and the love and all that stuff, it was awesome. Uh, the, just keep watching, keep liking, keep sharing, let everybody in the world know. You know, we want to make this into hopefully something big. Uh, you know, I'd like to say I'm working on my broadcasting career for after coaching, but let's see what shakes out. A um, couple things I wanted to talk about the previous episode. Uh, I had a lot of people ask me why it's called uh, Cherry Coke with Coach. So if you don't know me that well, most people know that I drink Cherry Coke like it's going out of style. Uh, I don't know what water is. It's basically my, um, my water to everybody. So Cherry Coke, that's where that comes from. Uh, the Cherry Coke with Coach when I was growing up in Central Isle, there was a guy named Andy Anderson, and every Saturday morning he'd have coffee with the coach. So he would call every coach that played that weekend in the area, and you just sit there and you listen to these gravelly voiced old men talk about the football game the, the night before. And I just remember going to uh, a college game at Upper Isle, watching my cousin play in the early 90s, or going to Iowa State games with my parents all through the 2000s and 90s. Um, that's what we did. We sat at the tailgate. Um, have you ever gone to an Iowa State game? We actually tailgated right across the road, and it was free back in the 90s. Now I think it's about 20 bucks. Actually, I think it's permit parking in that area. You have to buy a permit to park there. So um, that's why it's, I took that name, um, Cherry Coke's my love, and, and, and uh, I used to love spending time with my, my dad and my brother and my mom listening to uh, Coffee with Coach on Saturday mornings. Um, what else do we got? Keep the topics and the top five ideas coming. Uh, I think those are awesome. I, I got a few text messages and some really good topics. Um, I got some good people that I want to talk about those topics too. I think they're kind of pinpointed to a certain audience, so I think that would be great for us. Um, and then the last thing was, you know, I had somebody reach out about sponsorships. So, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. If you want a sponsorship, sponsor me a little bit in this, in this activity. Um, you know, I'll be happy to throw out that name, you know, I'll try a burger or uh, something to drink or, you know, we, we can do whatever. So uh, if you, somebody wants to give a deal on Cherry Cokes at their restaurant, you know, they say they, they heard, heard it from Coach Coffee with Coach, you know, or Cherry Coke with Coach. See, I'm already screwing up. Um, but yeah, sponsorships, that'd be amazing. Um, and then last, FYI from Matt Davis, uh, Red Oak alum and Hall of Famer Bill DeWitt. So if you listen to the first episode, we talked about uh, St. Joseph's um, in Minnesota. Bill DeWitt actually played on one of the national championship teams uh, there, and he was from Red Oak. So that was Bill DeWitt. Thank you, uh, good old Matt Davis, for that information. So let's go ahead and jump right into the episode. Uh, Coach Kipley, he's joining me again. Good to be I mean, back. Good to be back. We're, we're trying to figure out an exact name. You know, we'll go we'll, we'll co-host right now. Uh, he was kind of hoping for that. That Jamie from Joe Rogan style, but you know we got to keep those pretty faces on camera. So uh, we'll keep we'll keep Kip right here with us every week. Um, what's new, Coach? What's going on? Well, had a good weekend. Didn't hit up the IFCA coaches clinic. Got to learn a lot, but from Mary coaches, listen to the Board of Regents, University coaches, Farley, Ferentz, Campbell, then uh, a little bit of Dan McCarney. Always makes the weekend. Then some Bob Stoops. As well, when, but good to be back in Red Oak and ready to get after it for a week till spring break. Yeah, Coach Click was solid. Um, we we did uh, as a whole crew of coaches. We did really well at the at the casino. Um, <laughs> uh, we won't talk individually who did the best and who did the worst, but it was a group at, effort. It was group a group effort. effort so. Um, you know, it's just like a football game. Some people got to carry the other ones. Um, I might have been dragging a leg behind, and they might have been 20 yards up, but I was I was on my way. So, yeah, it was a good conference. Uh, Dan McCarney. Hilarious. He's the man. Uh, if you have an opportunity to listen to Dan McCarney talk in any aspect of life, I don't know if you guys know who Dan McCarney is. Uh, he was the head coach for Iowa State. Mid-90s? Mid-90s to early 2000s. Yeah, so he, he was amazing. Amazing man. He has great stories. Um, and just, just hilarious, probably not appropriate, some of the ones we heard. Uh, but but you just if you get a chance to listen to Dan McCartney speak, do it. The other one, Bob Stoops, if you get a chance to uh, watch him speak, go ahead and run the other direction. That was probably one of the worst keynote speakers I've ever heard in my life. 
and I was I was pumped up to see it. I don't yeah, know about I you. Think we were all pumped up, and he <laughs> left something to be wanted more. He was a little disappointing. At, <laughs> as a as a national champion and coach at Oklahoma, and your your coach in the XFL and UF, USFL or whatever it is now, you got to be better well spoken than that. Like he said, um, and I it was it was not it was not pretty. It was not pretty. It wasn't very long for a keynote either. Like, no, it was. 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, we had a, he let us out a half an hour early. I felt like uh, I was one of you guys in class, super excited when you don't have any work to do or like an AR day, right? You're like, oh man, we don't have to do anything. Yeah, that was Bob Stoops. He just left us on the on the curb and and just drove off into the sunset. So, um, and then the last thing I would tyrant I would say about the coaching clinic is kind of tired of hearing about. I went to Mount Carmel, listen to Jordan Lynch talk. He played quarterback for I think he was on the Broncos. Back up for the Broncos. So he talked. He coaches at Mount Carmel now in uh, Illinois. They've won four of the last six t- state titles at like 7A. So he's telling us about all this stuff that he does, and it, it was amazing. Like, I'm like taking notes. I'm like, holy cow, this is awesome. Then he informs us that his running back is going to Wisconsin. His <laughs> four, in six years, four of his quarterbacks had go- have gone D1, and he had three offensive linemen going D1. So I kind of like to hear from a coach that doesn't have five defensive one D1 guys going uh, uh, on one side of the ball to uh, to listen to. I think we can learn a little more from that. Yeah. I don't know. I might be on my, my rant on my soapbox here, but I'm not learning anything. I I mean, yeah, it looked great on paper, and it, I mean, they look beautiful on film, but I mean, not everybody has horses like that. So, no. yeah. Uh, spring break next week. Got any plans, Kip? Uh, I may go visit my brother up in the Twin Cities a little bit. I haven't seen them, and got the nieces and nephews, so they're fun for a couple of days. But I'm not gonna be there the whole week. I love them, but <laughs> a couple of days and I'm good with them. So. <laughs> well, they probably put you in charge the whole time. Um, yeah. So, well, just so everybody knows, it's listening. I'll be here in the weight room, seven to nine a.m. Monday through Friday. Um, let me sleep in a little bit. Yeah, Vazareth, you know, a little breakfast club action. Um, so yeah, that's how I spend my spring break this year. I was going to go to Texas, but things changed. So we'll, we'll watch some kids lift some weights. Um, lastly, combine. You see the combine last week, Kip? I uh, caught glimpses of it, but we saw on TV when we were at the clinic, and there's a new fast, fastest man at the combine. Yeah, so, uh, so. University of Texas is uh, Xavier Worthy. Ran a four-two-one. My uh, my buddy's kid. He posted on Facebook talking about that. And he's complaining that Worthy's not as good as Tyreek Hill, and that's he shouldn't be faster than him because he's not better than him. And it's like, well, if he's faster, it's one thing, but Tyreek Hill is kind of a kind of a good receiver. We'll see what yeah, his Worthy yeah. kid has. Well, Jerry Rice is the greatest receiver of all time, and he ran like a four, the slowest, like a four six or something. So, uh, and I noticed a lot of Caleb Williams news. He backed out of his medical exam. Wonder what he's hiding. And his dad was asking for like part share of whatever team that he got. Drafted yeah. by. Or was going to want to yeah. work around like the rookie uh-huh. salary, the rookie contract. Yeah, didn't do anything. So it's uh, you kids, you kids. That's uh, your generation. That's what you guys are causing. You know, back when I was a kid, we they just <laughs> said, uh, here's your helmet and shoulder pads and go out there and hit somebody. But uh, yeah, so that's enough. We got, I think that's pretty much all our life, what we, what's been happening. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get into our guests. These guys are waiting patiently to talk. Um, so I thought it was nice that we had three, three football players signed this year. So it was kind of a, uh, why not bring them all three in and talk at the same time? So we got uh, Big Peyton Eckernot. Price. See, hey, we talked last week about my pronunciation. I've known this kid for three years. <laughs> He's told me probably 322,000 times how to say it, but yep. he loves me and I love him, so he allows it. Um, <laughs> but we got Big Peyton, we got uh, Brandon Hernandez, and we got old Sebastian, a.k.a. Baz Clear, a.k.a. Bazareth. Bugsy. Bugsy. Uh, we got all the above. So we're going to meet these guys really quick. Kip, can you put a 25-second clock on the up there? And we're going to do a, a 25-second play clock. These guys are going to kind of just – Zip through and, and uh, tell us a little bit about themselves, whatever they want to share. Family, um, where they're going to school, uh, who their favorite coach is, you know. You just you got to throw anything against the wall and hope it sticks, right? So uh, I think they pointed at Baz. So Baz, yeah. you're, you're up. So here we rock and roll. 25 seconds.
I'm Baz Clear. I'm from Red Oak, born and raised. Um, I'm committed to be, play football at BVU. I'll be playing middle linebacker there. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, Who's your family? My mom's Carmen Clear. My dad's Gary Clear. Um, I have a couple siblings. Both li One lives in up near you and I. That's it. Okay. Cut off. Hey, right hey. Time. He made it to, he made 13 seconds. He got it in half. Let's see if we can get a little far. Who's next? I, I got it. All right, here we go, Hernandez. My name is Brandon Hernandez. I play football for Nordine at Red Oak. I committed to Briarcliff University. I'm playing a little bit of DB safety. Um, I'm a Broncos fan. It hurts. We just, <laughs> we just released Russell Wilson today. Those two years were painful, but I hope we I hope we sign a better quarterback. Three minute, three seconds to spare. Hey, my brother is a Broncos fan, and at least he got to live through the glory days. Like yeah, the LA John days. Yeah. That dude was Terrell Davis, uh, McCaffrey, and McCaffrey, Ed McCaffrey, the dad. Oh, dude, he was, he a, was come on, crazy. amazing. This is my current amazing. Just for Brandon. Oh, oh, well, we're, we're cutting into some, some yeah. topics here, oh, I guess. Oh, All right, well, yeah. we'll let, we'll let uh, Peyton overlapping. throw it out there. So we got Big Peyton now. Here you go, 25 on the clock. My name is Peyton Ekternaw. I'm committed to Iowa Western Community College to play football, offensive line. My mom is Kristen McKinley. My dad's Kevin, I mean, Jeremy Ekternaw. My stepdad's Kevin McKinley. And my stepmom is Ann Ekternaw. And, um, Started playing football here in the eighth grade, fell in love with it, and Coach Nordin came in and changed my per whole perspective on it. I love this guy right here, even though he can't pronounce Ekterna. Ekterna, there you go, guys. <laughs> oh, one second on the clock. We had almost made it. Almost made it. I'm not used to 25 seconds. <laughs> Five seconds or less. Say, football is a seven seconds and take a break sport. Yeah. But you get 25 seconds to walk up to the ball yeah. and all that extra Hell stuff. Yeah. So, walk. well, walk. I'm a. Uh, I'm proud to say I've coached these guys for three years, and you know it's, it, it makes me excited to see them go on to the next level and, and compete and uh, play a little more football and uh, get that education. Um, you know, if you get an opportunity to get school paid for, uh, no matter if it's football, basketball, band, play, um, ed, ed, uh, academics, uh, whatever it can, get, take that opportunity and go, even if it's a ju uh, JUCO, get that two-year degree certificate, um, and move on from there if you want to go to a four-year or um, start working. I mean, you yeah. get some really good stories. I don't know if you guys have uh, – Baz, you got kind of into that, didn't you? I'm in the uh, welding program for uh, SWIG right now. See, yeah. I mean, that, what is it? You can get a certificate in 18 months and be working. Yeah. Um, so there's there's solid opportunities, more opportunities than probably me. And mm -hmm. Kip's a little younger than me, but um, that we had. So uh, let's open it up the floor here. We got uh, – I had a topic I wanted to start with these guys right off the bat. I don't know, Kip, um, when I was a kid, our student sections were out of control. It was like everybody, everybody in town went to the games. They would follow the bus. I mean, last person out of town shut off the lights. I mean, that was the kind of thing that it was in my town. Um, I remember basketball games, the whole student section were, were uh, the wife beater tank top things, and they'd be matching. We had so many people at a... It was Bonnerant and Ferrar versus Red, uh, uh, Rolling Story. We were number one. They were number two because we had beat them during the season. Winner of the game went to state. It was a sub-state. They filled up Irvindale's gym. Two, a, two 2 a schools filled the whole gym. They had to stop people. There were people in the uh, lunchroom watching it on TV. They had to stop people. The fire marshal stopped people from coming in the, the building. I, I don't know. Do you guys know... Uh, Kip, did you have huge student sections when you were growing up? Or is... is it was never... As crazy as that, I mean, we were a bigger 3A school, so we always had a decent-sized one, but our pet band was a really big thing. We were kind of known for having a really good pet band, so when they weren't playing, they'd come join the uh, student, section. student sections. And, like, we didn't really get into, like, the themes or anything. No, I'm not yeah, we never had that. If we were just lame, like, we'd have maybe have a purple out, a black out, a white out. We'd do, like, some school colors. Some yeah. school-colored themes, but we didn't do, we, like... Beach night and kind of stuff. That yeah, we never did that. Now. We always did the, the the wife beaters, and we always had the student, the junior high student section on the side, and yeah. like yeah. they would like just stare at this the high school student section that was on the stage mm -hmm. because they were just waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm a seventh. I can't wait till I'm a ninth grader. I get to be on that stage. Like it was like like 
get, I get goosebumps thinking about it. But I don't know. Do you guys think that, that your student sections you have nowadays are are good? I mean, are you? I mean, is there a sport that kind of takes it over? Or I mean, what's your guys' opinion on student sections here in 2024? I want to say definitely some other sports. You know, there's more people at like. I know volleyball is a big sport people are at. Basketball. Basketball, definitely. Just they like watching basketball, like being inside, not outside. Well, our football. Our student section was jumping the most, like, during my eighth grade year when it was, like, 2019, 2020. And girls' basketball was going to state. Girls' volleyball was going to state. I don't know if boys' basketball. Boys' basketball, they were kind of they were kind of down a little bit those couple of years. Boys wrestling did well. Yeah. Boys football, I can't remember. They didn't do great. But, like, the girls' student sections were jumping. Like, it was crazy. At but State. they were competitive at that time. Oh, yeah. 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 But, yeah. like, other than that, like, it's it's kind of it's kind of real mellow, I guess. It's yeah. not – you don't, like – and I think it's – some of it's because of – I feel like – and I don't, I don't want to have any bad rep against, like, the athletic directors, but sometimes you – I don't know. Sometimes you got to let the kids go, but also sometimes the kids go too far. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. like, and especially with the way that the times change, you know. Well, you know you guys sit there and you're like, okay, we got this new champ. I mean, we're, yeah. in, we're in a high school at one time, too. We're, we're uh, retired yep. adolescents. Yeah, yep. So you're sitting there like, I got this good champ. And, you know, you, you, you point to Ace Wilkins or somebody and say, <laughs> hey, buddy, I got one for you. You know, and, and you try it. Yeah. You can't, he, he puts it down and then you just got to move on, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's – I, I think we, I, I think senior sections are still there. I think I might, it might be just like the road games. You know, well, we yeah. travel so far for football that, you know, we, I always talked about it to us that, you know, there's, there's really nobody here. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's, you know, lack of transportation, um, um, just lack of um, pride for wanting the to go. Yeah, yeah, the pride for the school, you know, that kind of, that starts with the culture yeah, of the whole school. Big, yeah. um, but I mean, the one thing that helps is winning, right? Yeah. You know, um, and it does. It does help. I know a student, good student section. That was a Shenandoah two years ago. Um, that uh, your guys' junior year. Yeah. I Even, mean that place was packed. Yeah. yeah. So I mean it's it's a it's a it's a different atmosphere. It changes the game, yeah. I think. Um, but I just I just grew up with student sections, and it was just it was yeah. epic. I, mean, I remember my buddy got shoved into a student section one time, and they wouldn't let him go during varsity games. So we had to go pull him out, and you know it's just it it just adds that flair, that swagger yeah, to the yeah. game that I like. So I'd say maybe the consistency hasn't been there for like maybe Redick showing out every game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think there's some smarts enough that they know, hey, this is postseason basketball. First round we get a host. Let's have a big crowd. It, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Clarence is up here for volleyball. They beat us in the regular season. We need to have a big crowd. Yeah. So they kinda they know when to show up at the right time. It's just everyone's busy, things are going on. So yeah. it's not consistently, you know, and you, huge you go, every, every home game. If I've gone to Harlan games and, like, Valley games. And, like, when we played Valley when I was at Roosevelt – no, I'm sorry, Dowling. We, they, they smoked us at, at Williams Field where Grandview plays and East High. And they didn't really have a big crowd there. But when they, they got to the Dome, oh, they were yeah. filled up the building, yeah. you know. So yeah. I think you get that winning aspect, too, that they're like, well – they're going to beat Roosevelt. They're going to beat this team. Let's go in the third round when they actually play a Cedar Falls or, or an Ankeny, and, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a battle. So, um, I mean, there's there's different sides of the coin. Yeah. Um, but it's just, a, I mean, when you have more fans at an away game than the home team, it's just, it, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. a, it's a Definitely. mind control almost yeah, to definitely. the other team. Yeah. Um, I know in high school we always talked about that, that we had more fans sometimes on the visitor side than we did the home side. Yeah. And it's, it's intimidating to the other team, and, and it, it, it just brings that atmosphere. It's just amazing. Um, hope you guys get experience that in, in college. college. Hopefully. College atmosphere yeah. is a little different. I mean, Iowa Western, they'll yeah. get some pretty big crowds. I mean, two-time well, national champs. Yeah. Saturdays, nothing's going Three on. Three-time national yeah. champs. It's yeah. middle of the day. Back-to-back. Back. Back to, that's what I meant. Back two, back. two in a row. Um, I don't know what Briarcliff get pretty good crowds over there. Yeah, I know when they play Morningside, they get very big crowds no matter yeah. what. Just because they're a, rivals. Yeah. Cross town. Yeah. Cross town yeah. rivalry. That'd be kind of cool. See, that's, to play they're 15 well, minutes away, so that's one of those games goes. where it's like whoever's playing home, the, I feel like the away crowd is probably bigger. 
Yeah, I because mean, especially when Morningside goes to Briarcliff, just because Briarcliff is the smaller school yeah. on, in that town, that Morningside definitely will, is a little bit bigger, but it gives you that underdog, yeah. That, yeah. that underdog look. So, yeah. and I mean that's, I mean that's that conference. It's, oh yeah, it, oh yeah, woo. that's tough. Yeah. Morningside, Northwest, Northwest woo. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah, play a little football there. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, I was yeah. at you and I during the Ali for Nash 2010 Sweet 16. So there was some. Fun basketball. Epic, epic. Were they in the McLeod Center at that time, or were they yeah. still in the uni? They were in the McLeod Center. McLeod, oh, and sorry. <laughs> yeah, so that place would be packed. And they kind of started the interlude dance that kind of got popular around that time. So I was there for that. So That was one of those moments when you hit that three. Yep. I, it, it was almost like, I mean, the only example I can use is probably not the best example, but like 9 11 or mm -hmm. like when it was, where were you with JFK? But I was bowling, <laughs> enjoying a PBR. I haven't drank in about 12 years, but I was enjoying one that night and was in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, at North Carolina State. Yeah, get my bowl on, you know? You know, ain't no Still big deal. Still got it to this day. It, it's tapered off quite a bit, but, um, um, you know, the. the Chicken wing doesn't work as well as it used to. But yeah, I, I still remember that. I mean, I was bowling and we stopped to, to watch it. Yeah, I was downstairs watching my parents' basement. It's gonna feel like I'm name dropping, but Brandon Sheriff was a couple years younger than me, so I was, he was over. We were watching it, and then later that night, my parents were on vacation. One of my college friends like called up, and we started like, "Hey, my mom's willing to order Sweet Sixteen tickets. Are you in? <laughs> we got we got to know by tonight." So I'm calling my parents, but like, "Hey." Can I, I, can I borrow 200 bucks to the, buy a 16 ticket to go to St. Louis? And that was 06? 2010. 2010. And now I wonder how much a sweet 16 ticket is. Yeah. You're talking 200 bucks then? It was 200 bucks to get into Caitlin Clark yeah. the other day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just the, in the nosebleed. That's and if you've ever been in, in uh, Carver, that nosebleed's up there. Yeah. <laughs> and your head touches the ceiling. Yeah, that's the greatest arena. Uh, oh, for then, yeah, yeah, for wrestling. For a duel. For a duel, yeah, me. Yeah, for a duel, yeah. me. That's and you guys have never experienced a duel in high school wrestling, have I you? Have not. That that's one of the most epic things too. Just how I'd love to see the wrestling team get all wrestling teams get full and have a Shenandoah Red Oak yeah. just duel. And that's just... that's been the biggest thing. Like I've wanted to see is like if you can get us in a gym spotlight one mat. We're both warming up at the same time. It, it gets a little pushy shovy. Yeah. You got to go to the center. You got to shake hands. Like, it's just a dual meet is where it's at in wrestling. And I think I think that high school going away from it, I think it's something that they need to go back to. I don't think quads are as fun. I don't mm -hmm. think trianglers are as fun. But at the same time, 1A schools can't do it. 2A schools can't do it. There are 1A schools that fill a roster, but... Those one A schools also compete very well at the state tournament. Yeah, yeah. so you gotta get those old Don Boscos every single yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. There. So uh, and that, and it's I think it's you only get so many dates. Competition. Yep. Dates. Yeah. Yep. So they just they try and get you. Because how many matches does a average varsity wrestler or varsity JV wrestler get a year? Average like in Iowa, I would say is like twenty five to thirty, maybe forty. Yeah. But like us, we're wrestling fifty. Because we have those competition dates and they're always quads. We only have two triangulars ever. So you're always getting three matches a night. Yep. Twelve always. times. And at tournaments. least two. At least two matches a night. At least two matches at a tournament. So and then especially like we're going down to at the Stampede where we could wrestle up to like ten matches yeah. in that tournament. Whew. You know, and that's what two day two day tournament, or and you we just go, go all in two both days. You know, we go up to West Delaware and. But there's Dude, some. That's a good bracket. So that Stampede and that West Delaware. Oh yeah. Straight dogs. Oh yeah. I mean, West Delaware is a solid program. Dude, that's three yeah. A. Or are they two A? I think they're still two A. Three A. Okay. Yeah. Two A. Where really Shell Rock wrestling. is like up there. Oh yeah. I think I get those mixed up. Where really Shell Rock and yeah. West Delaware. That'd be Warburg. But... Maybe you guys went yeah. up there and visited. Oh, yeah. Did y'all, all three of you go to Warburg and visit? I only talked to the coach, but I didn't visit. That's a. It's beautiful campus. It's, it's it was nice beautiful. beautiful stadium. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, they get jumping too. They, oh yeah, that's that's where the student section is at. Like, <laughs> those kids, those kids, they do it right up. That game was wild line. too. The game we went and watched. Oh, dude. just back to back <laughs> touchdowns. Just no going, defense. No defense. No defense. Yeah, I don't touchdowns. like to hear that. I don't like to hear that. Uh, yeah, there, there's there's some nice bez. I know because I played in the same conference you did. They kind of 
moved around a little bit, but there's some uh, nice, nice, beautiful stadiums. The Rock Bowl, I think that's Loris out in Cedar Rapids. It's a big yeah. brick wall in one end zone, and it's uh, there's some pretty nice places. Then you get the front of the mills, like a Simpson or Central has. Yeah. They have nice stadiums, but there's nothing uh, nice around the outside. You know, look at yeah. you got the pond, yeah, uh, the lake up yep. in. in yeah, I think the best part about Simpson when we went and watched them, they played Warburg. They battled them. They held them. They, they held them. points first half. They bat, that game was a battle, and it was Warburg amazing. and Co. Are they the top dogs now? Oh, Warburg definitely is Co. I say Co. Oh, Co's, no. Co's in that Cornell Conference now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So, so Central's Central's number two. Okay. Yeah, Central's number two. But I know Co was. They were like eight and two, like uh, Central was. Well, they're playing against Cornell and. That's yeah. that. That's the Ivy League, League conference, yeah. I think. That Cornell's in there. <laughs> you know, you gotta gotta have no, that three eight to get in that bad boy. <laughs> yeah. you know? no, no. That's a long drive for you guys, though. I mean, oh, that's three oh, yeah. hours. Yeah, four hours. Four, four hours. Five, five, four, 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 five. You're going all the way across the state. Yeah, dude. It was I bad. mean, it's all the way over like, there. When we went to Warburg, we had a hotel room, which we needed because yeah. after we left that game, we needed a hotel. We yeah. left the game at like ten thirty. Or no, we left the game. What we left the game at ten, I think. Yeah. Got back at ten thirty, because we we're gonna try and get Dairy Queen. Was we? close, yeah. But it was close. <laughs> was Dairy Queen. So we just had to go to bed because we're like we we have to we have to go or else the we like looked up to make sure the hotel was still gonna be open once we get back because you know they lock the doors at a certain mm -hmm. time. So we we're like we gotta get yeah. back. So we we left <laughs> a little go. early, but when we left, we're walking away. They had fireworks going off and yeah, everything. Yeah, was... I remember that, dude. Uh, well, I, I know I haven't been to one with Peyton. I've been with these two on a visit, um, and we we had some experience. I won't say the college for you because those walking tacos were uh, horrible. Oh my gosh! The meat was frozen. Like I think it was a frozen. Just they got it out of the fridge frozen. I don't well, know. Remember those one dudes like from T South Dakota? They were like it walking back like, can we get another one? And we're like dumping ours in the trash. Like it was, and it was. Freezing. It's because we have good walk tacos here. Yeah, we, we, we know just how to cook the walk tacos. And then me and Baz went with uh, Adam. <laughs> Adam to uh, North Dakota State. So we <laughs> left early in the morning on Saturday because we played West Central Valley the night before. No, it was Mo Valley. Mo Valley. So it we drove West Central Valley. I think it was West Central Valley because Adam yelled a lot that game. But the night before that, we had a volleyball game. Oh yeah. And so, so. he's yelling at that too, <laughs> and his voice was just completely gone. He couldn't say a word without going. <laughs> before, he, before, he, before he was talking. So me and Baz were in the front talking and Adam would chime in with, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> What? <laughs> so, and then these two uh, twin brothers that were North Dakota they State like fans. Cooks. Yeah, they were trying they were talking trying to talk to Adam and then Baz all he could do is laugh while he needed his walking taco. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're trying to tell the guys I'm like, well he lost his voice from a volleyball game and from a football game and he's like they're like, Man, I bet it's a hilarious story, you'll have to tell me later. I'm like no, the story is he lost his voice. Yeah. Like, I bet something else. No, <laughs> this is what happened. They so. thought he was handicapped for a second. They were like, they were like, can he not? Can he not talk? Yeah, they and thought he was like, like mute. No. And I was trying to get it out that he was that he was, he was <laughs> lost his voice, and I was I was just dying. Oh, and he's what, not speechless very many times. No, no, Adam, no that's Adam, what makes it funnier. Yeah, yeah no, he Adam. talks all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He always you know Adam, he talks. He talks. Yeah. But I think the best part, we were driving back, and Adam fell asleep in the back seat, and. Baz is over here trying to play basketball, making skittles into his mouth. But that's why Baz wrestled. He, uh, I think, yeah. it was 0 for three. He missed all the shots. Dude, so. no, I had, I, had a room, I had a room grazer. All right. So, that, oh man, just the uh, the rides. You can't always forget those. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, Except for the Kansas State camp, I can forget that one. Oh yeah, we did. We did go to K State. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, I did. look at that. Those hey, are good things. You did know? we go to K State though? Yeah, we did go to K State. No, we didn't go to K State. You guys went to K State. Yeah, when we yeah, went to Julie yeah. took you. I forgot what I was talking yeah. about. We were, we were all loaded in Julie's yeah. car, like that's on right. top of each other. Yeah, Dude. I remember here because you guys sent me yeah. pictures of it. Yeah, you know, that's why I felt we like I was with you. Yeah, um. I say Julie like took pictures of every single oh, like mile, Julie. every mile. <laughs> Julie's taking pictures of everything. Did you guys get had to, had to get out of the Kansas sign and? Take a picture. Yeah, 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 right. Probably. Made, welcome to Kansas. They I think that's lost, what he said. She's probably lost in her camera roll somewhere. <laughs> but you guys gotta love that. You have Jan Renander and Julie Fouts just clicking pictures for you guys mm -hmm. all the time. You guys in, in 10, 15 years, you're gonna have all those oh, pictures yeah. and yeah. go back and mm -hmm. laugh at each other and yeah. and you know, you're going to see Brandon Lane face down like he's dead on the field. <laughs> yeah, Catches all, all the He's stretching his hand out. Yeah, all the bad moments. All you the know, good moments. She, she caught them all. And I mean, that, I mean, I'll remember it all. When I'm 
80 years old, I'm hoping my wife will, you know, pull them out and like remind me who everybody is. You know, hopefully I will have still some memory at that point. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't know if you're making it to 80. Way back from, from, from the shock ball. Yeah, we won't bring that up. You know? <laughs> Forgot about that. that, that you know, uh, that, that's a, if that, if that does happen, just let the world know what, hey. what happened. You know, uh, it, it, it was what it was. So, um, I, you know, I asked these guys if they... One, if they had any topics they wanted to bring it themselves, so let's uh, let's let these guys roll with a few topics and uh, see what they what they come up with. I also told them if they want to ask me a question, they can ask me anything, but I may or may not answer it. Uh, matters what what it is. But what do you guys got? Can we talk about how the case against Panario Johnson got dropped? I saw that for for wrestling from all the Iowa State players, right? Every I don't. Iowa I saw that. I saw that it was just Panario, but. But dude, Tom Brand's got to be having a cow. Oh man, because I was Iowa wrestlers are still out. Tom yeah. Brand or his son uh, Nelson is done. Yeah. his career's over. Um, the heavyweight Cassiope. Cassiope, done. he's over. Um, we got Scribe, Scriber. He didn't Freeber, get caught. Game over. <laughs> Game over. Uh, yeah. So he's I wonder out. what I wonder what the difference is. Did what 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 happened differently for Iowa State than Iowa? I don't know, but I heard that. Um, I heard something about how Panario. It was like. His was different because he was using someone else's identity. So it was a law case and not like a case because Nelson's was just a case with the NCAA where Panario's was, was a case with the law. Because it's criminal because he's, he's so, using somebody else's okay. false identification. Or yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 That's, that's kind of what I read up on. But other than that, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, because I saw that in the paper the other day that, uh, so is he going to wrestle again? Oh, they said Nelson Brands. Oh, this must be still the. Is that why Abe's universe. out? Yeah, Abe's done. I didn't done. know that. Abe is done, yeah. Dude, I just missed right here. Because those guys, those guys were supposed to. Uh... So just he, him, not even the rest yeah. of them. Yeah. Don't get on the charges against him. Uh, no. Tampering with records. So that'd be him using somebody else's name. Yeah. Huh. Ooh. So that's just going to open a can of worms for. The other guys to be yeah. like, well, what about me? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy what the uh, uh, it's come to with the NIL. That's what uh, I was going to bring up. What's what what we talked about last week? Does you know does NCAA even have any authority anymore? I mean, no. what you just guys are just getting bags. Yeah, just come play here, Kaylin uh, Clark. Yeah, she got a Gatorade con- yeah. contract. I mean, they're just making. Hand over fist money. Pretty sure she has a fairway contract too, or something yeah, like that. Like high, yeah. I know a lot of the, I know um, the Iowa wrestlers. A couple of those guys, Ben Keeter, ben I think has he has a, a fairway, one. fairway contract. Yeah. yeah. So I those mean, are, those guys are getting meat from fairway. There was you know? that one guy from uh, uh, Nebraska, the coldest. Oh, oh. Or oh yeah. Is so it? he got a job yeah, at Crawford. Yeah. AC. Yeah. AC yeah, play because yeah. he's the coldest. That's, I mean, that's perfect. But yeah, that's I mean, good. they can make. So she has State Farm, Nike, and Gatorade. That's what Caitlin Clark has. Because Jake from State Farm was at the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I'm pretty sure she's the highest paid State Farm NIL. She might be the the highest paid women's basketball player. She deserves to be. Holy buckets. Except for Angel Reese might be out there just because. Yeah, she she does pretty well. Yeah. Uh, That might be interesting. I don't know how well. I I mean, I don't watch a lot of women's basketball. Um, I'll probably watch the tournament. Uh, But... We got interest in just to see what how that happens because that LSU team is stacked. They got that oh, girl yeah. from Louisville yeah. that came yeah. to yeah. play. Oh yeah. I mean they they got some good players. Talk about a smoke show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> easy there, <laughs> man. Easy. No. Yeah. I, it, I mean. Ivy. Yeah. Gator, yeah. Ivy, yeah. State Farm. Mm-hmm. Golly. Well, some of these like college athletes, they don't even have to go to the pros to like they already have no. they already made a lot of money yeah they, it's I like mean, you were talking about like joey bosa right yeah, yeah I just, just saying he wants to make as much money as he did is in college yeah but that was definitely not That's crazy. at the time where they were getting paid to yeah. play <laughs> yeah so i mean it's, johnny Manziel. yeah you, can, you can go to college now get an nil deal get a four-year degree for free mm-hmm. make a few bags and then start your career you don't even have to go on and play a yeah. professional sport and ruin your body more than it already I mean, I'm sure they have the love of the game to, to play more. What about Bronny James? If he gets drafted by the Lakers, oh, dude, oh dude. my. If he, I don't know what I don't, I don't know if he, I don't know if he'll get drafted this, like, he this. Met, uh, second, uh, I don't know. If he, if he declares, 
They have to. They are have they to. not? Uh, yeah. It sounds like they are. The NFL and if LeBron will, does, the if they, LeBron will make it work. Dude, if LeBron doesn't <laughs> get his way, like he'll probably just retire and say, "Screw it, I'm gonna go play in China and I'll bring my son with or something." Like, yeah, that's. Oh my God, Ronnie needs to go to China. He averaged five points a game. I don't think he's gonna get Who? drafted. Ronnie, Ronnie won't even make it in the Dude, he's not, uh, I don't even know how he. I don't even know how good he is. He's. I mean, he's. I quit. I quit watching Slow Shay and all that stuff a long time ago when they all got out of high school. No. Yeah, he absolutely, absolutely wants to play with his eldest son in the pros. You were watching those slow shave videos over time? I thought I heard he came out from the little bit, but it's just... Have you seen those? Well, who wouldn't want to play with their son in the pros? I mean, oh, no, absolutely. Obvious, but your son better be good enough to play in the pros. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not like they're just going to make an excuse just because just you're yeah. LeBron James. They kind of did They promise. I'm saying you know. Okay, but his brother's good enough. His brother is good enough, at least to play in the G League. Bronny isn't. My last year will be played with my son. That's two years ago. Yeah, he's. he's what is Bronny averaging? Five points per game. Yeah, yeah. He, he's at all single digits. Yeah. Oh man. It's it's not. It's nothing to. It's not even a draftable stat line. Yeah. I was like, I keep seeing these TikToks or Bronny James highlights when he gets in. It's literally one play, and then it's over. Really? Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, uh, granted, he's a freshman, but like still. Nineteen minutes a game. Five points, okay. two boards, two assists, thir- shoots 37. He shoots about as good as his dad does. But six for two ten. Okay, so you gotta you gotta give it to him because he's only a freshman, I guess. But is he a redshirt freshman? No, he's, he's a playing. Straight up freshman. Straight up freshman. Straight up freshman. Yeah. His I guess the younger brother's pretty good. Six four two ten. Yeah, he's, Bryce. He's, yeah. Bryce. I guess he's, he's big better. too. Yeah, he's, he's he got tall. Those, Bryce is huge. He got those goggles. I used to rock those goggles in eighth and ninth grade. But on period. nineteen and a half minutes, you need to be something. And That's your last a, name's James? Like yeah, 20 you're, minutes yeah, basically, true. and you're putting up that stats. I Michael Jordan's know. sons weren't that great either. Um, no. they, they knew it. They didn't. They weren't. Michael Jordan is sitting there like, I ain't retiring until my boy plays with me. At least it's not like Magic Jones. No, Michael Jordan <laughs> went by the friggin' <laughs> uh, NASCAR team, dude. Yeah. With him and Denny Hamlin, I've been watching that on Netflix. That's a good show. Randy Moss used to have a, a NASCAR truck team. The only bad were like, I've been watching that on Tuesday. Dude, it's good. It's really good. Making a left turn. I've been getting into it. Turn making left. another left turn. Denny Hamlin's got oh that swagger. Oh, my goodness. He's turning left again. Denny uh, Hamlin's got that swagger. Shit. Yeah, they got that, got that uh, NASCAR swagger. He plays with it. Speed and aggression. <laughs> Uh, well, what else you guys got? You got any other topics? We just talked about mine, NIL deals, and See, that's how it works, you know? Yeah. We just start flowing around. Jason Kelsey retires 13, after 13 seasons, uh, seven-time Pro Bowler and six-time All-Pro. He's trying Pro to make Bowl. me cry over here? I almost cried earlier. His, oh, his, yeah. his, I saw his uh, his speech that he was giving to the team, mm-hmm. and his brother was right there. It was sad. Yeah. I mean, what a great man. He, but like, oh, yeah. you, How can you hate you Jason? Can. You can't. That's a good he, guy right there. He's a he good guy. Has, he should have got model of the year. Have you ever, have you watched <laughs> his his Amazon? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched yeah. it. Yeah. His wife is hilarious oh, yeah, too. She, like it's, uh, I like him. She, you know, she's a Philly fan. Like, oh yeah. You, how well, she well, she's from she, Philly. She, well, yeah, she was a Philly fan before they. She she that. refuses to wear anything like Chiefs when they go watch the Chiefs really? at the Super Bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. She wore nothing. He's like, well, she won't. She wear like a Cincinnati. Bearcats, yeah. Because they won both of Cincinnati. Yeah, I, I, I kind of figured he was. If it wasn't this year, it was going to be next year. Um, I was kind of hoping that maybe, you know, his brother would be like, let's come play with him for one year. Yeah. Come on over to the Eagles. You want that on your team? Uh, we don't need to have Taylor come with, but we can go ahead and have I, don't uh, know. I, I like Dallas Jason Goddard. Go. Uh, we could have two tight ends. We yeah. lost A.J. Brown because he's a prima donna like most yeah. receivers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, his, his Super Bowl speech oh. might be the greatest. Yeah, yeah. 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 Postseason, any sports speech ever. That team, though, they were underdogs. Oh, yeah. No one expected them to win. I don't yeah. know if I can play that speech. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a long Is it family friendly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> he, lets, he lets some stuff fly hey. during that. Yeah, yeah well, it's uh, We don't want to ruin any of those possible sponsorships. On yeah, the yeah. 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 we got we to make sure we keep it at least PG, maybe PG 13 sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jason Kelsey. I mean, uh, oh my guy. That's, so is, is, is Russell? Did you say Russell Wilson, Wilson is retiring, or no, he just got to let go? He got released. He released. He got released. He's got to be getting close to retirement too. Yeah, he's. I want to say he's like thirty-four. I remember when he was in college, he played for North Carolina State, and he couldn't decide between baseball and football. And North Carolina State's football coach is like, "Well, you need to pick." 
And he's like, well, I still want to play baseball. So he said, well, you're done at North Carolina State for football. So he went to Wisconsin yeah. and almost took him to the to the national title game. 85 million. Ooh, that'll be killer. So they're just oh. dead. Mm. They're paying him not to play. Yeah. yeah. It's just like um, when LSU fired their coach. Oh, yeah. The boys coach, he's like, which door do you want me to go out? Because he's still getting paid. That, that's what I say. I just need that D1 job. <laughs> sign that four-year, $10 million deal. Just lose the first year. They fire me. Me and my wife are living in a cabin in the <laughs> yeah. woods, and I'm fishing every day. Yep. She's going around picking up her rocks and sticks and <laughs> taking pictures of mushrooms, whatever whatever she does. Hanging laundry you know, outside. Hey, you know. Whatever she's got to do, but I know where I'll be. Yeah, um, yeah it's... Uh, well, we've got the draft coming up, too, so we'll be oh, able to see. I got a guy in the draft that I was looking at insane. What, are you going to draft him or what? You need to call Elway let him know. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, give, give Elway a call. Braden Fisk, I think. We need to pick From up Florida State. Back. Dolphins need to pick up. Four, seven, eight. Faster than Patrick Mahomes. You want to stick with Tua? 33 and a half, 40. He's just not our offense. Higher than George Pickens and then a 9-9 broad jump and a... Four three seven shuttle six five three hundred pounds from Florida State. From Florida State, and that is insane. Is that their D lineman? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Did you see this on our D? Oh, Mort. Oh, Mort died too. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did. The last few years, oh, you could tell he's been struggling because he, yeah, he took a he, like the last year after working on his health and family. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. But that's like our the gener- Mort report. That's our generation's Adam report. Schefter. Yeah, these guys know Adam, Adam Schefter, Schefter for us. Yeah, that's your guy right here. That's that'd be us. Right there. That's our. <laughs> He, that's my guy right there, Brando. That's my guy. Right there. My 72. guy. 72. What a good number, though. Yeah, it's a good number. I see that number a lot. No, it's average. It's average. I hear that number a lot for holding or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I only had one this year. Uh, one too many. No, one too many. Oh, you just oh. die of an old age or. What time we got? Oh, we're, we're getting close. Hey. So we, we kind of we kind of went around the table, talked a little bit. I had to, I gave these guys an assignment. You know, we all, last week we did our top five uh, greatest dynasties of all time. So in our generation, I asked these young men, where did I put it? Oh, their top five is the top five Red Oak sports moments in your four years at Red Oak, and these do not have to be something you participated in. All right, so they're going to let us know what they're. Top five memories from sports in the last four years are. Does somebody want to go first? I got it. All right, so you're going to start at number five. Oh, okay. Um, number five for me, I wasn't a part of it. Well, I was a part of the team, but just watching the boys compete at state track and breaking that record that was being held for like a long time, watching Coach Nordine and Sue Ann and Morris get them to state was it was really fun because they worked, they worked really hard to get there. And when they broke it, it was just, you know, yeah, that would Something been to be proud of for Red Oak. Mm-hmm. Riley, Faust, Landon Cows, Aiden Bruce, Braden Sifford, Jack, Jack Kling. Kling. So they were there's five guys and they finished fifth in uh, class two A um, yeah. uh, in the state with five guys. I, I mean it was it was an amazing run. They those guys were just fast. Oh yeah, they oh, were yeah. so fast. Landon, his sixty mm-hmm. was ridiculous. Oh, when he when we ran at the Iowa State championship, oh man, dude. I remember watching, holding the blocks for him, and you could see the the tre- the mm-hmm. turf from the track like kick up, up from his yeah. spikes like so fast. His Riley so insane. powerful. Jack, I mean, we don't know how he got just, fast. <laughs> you know, you know well, Jack's well, fast for Jack. some reason. That's just Jack Leg. Uh, just Jack. So <laughs> just yeah, that was. And then, you know, we don't like to bring up that team down south that much. Um, but Shan finished fourth. Clarenda mm-hmm. finished sixth, and Red Oak finished tenth. I think last mm-hmm. year uh, in the state. So. You know, not a lot of people talk about Southwest Iowa, and that just shows. I yeah. mean, just there's staff there. for sure. Yeah. And I would say the most successful program in Red Oak is the boys track team. Oh yeah, I mean, Sue Ann sends kids to state every single every year. year. Yeah, something. Arms, 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 right, arms boys? Yeah. <laughs> so, who's got the next one? Um, well, I guess I'll do my fifth one. Um, That's what we'll start. With. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have an honorable mention, but we'll go over that later. Throw um, it out there. Okay, so my honorable mention is Southwest Valley and trainer games that we played this year. I think it was a big realization for our team that we can hang with ranked opponents. Trainers weren't, was ranked when we played them, right? Yep. Southwest Valley was ranked when we played them. I know that for sure because they were yeah. ranked sixth in A. Yeah. Yep. And, like, I mean, losing – so the trainer game, that was a little, that was a little farther fetched. But, I mean, that Southwest, that Southwest Valley game was 31-34, right? Yeah. 
Yep, yep. Yep. That's like, I mean, we can, and it was a, that was a knockdown drag out. It was, oh, yeah, a, it was. I think the feel. In 100 degrees. Yeah, 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 it, it, it felt like 106, but the September. actual temp was 99 or something. There was right. a couple kids puking. And, and our third quarter that day was was Ooh. rough. Oh yeah. I mean, we had we had we had a good handle of the game in the first half. Yeah. Third quarter, I remember getting all you guys to get together at the end of that third quarter and kind of let you have it um, and letting you know that that was one of the worst quarters of football. If we play a full game, right? We talk about that all the time. Yeah. Uh, and trainer, it was one little mistake turned into a snowball, and and Cause we were leading like I think the whole first. Quarter, I think. Yeah, Something I mean, like we were we were winning the halftime, winning at Southwest Valley. Yeah, oh, yeah, we were, we were we were up, I think, two touchdowns yep. against Southwest Valley. How many cramps you get that game, Brando? Uh, Southwest Valley. Yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were all over Trainer's run game too. Oh yeah, that yeah. little running back was like five foot nothing. But he appeared out of nowhere, but he would just happen to appear in front of one of us. <laughs> like, oh, there so, he is. Yeah. So we would find him, but... Somebody grab him. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grab him. <laughs> Get him. Uh, what's number five? Oh, number five. Number five. Oh, I know what it is. So we started out 4-0. What was that? What would it be two years ago now? Yep. Mm-hmm. 166 to nothing. I wasn't particularly on the field, but still just like experiencing... That's crazy. That was crazy. Also, almost being the guy to give up a touchdown in like the third game because I was jumped off sides inside the 15 yard line. Um, that was that was kind of nerve wracking, but uh, yeah. So keep Dawson Bond in the game, I guess is what, what you could say there. But, um, he probably took himself out. That's the only time that yeah, kid came out of the game. Yeah. So he'd tell you to go in for a cold place yeah. and, and then come back in. So he was he was on his own schedule. But, yeah. uh, when we, your name's Dawson Bond, I mean, yeah, that kind of happens. Years, Bond, we finally yeah. beat Riverside after three after two years of losing that third year. We finally got him, which yeah. was nice because yeah. you just hated yeah. losing to an A team. Like, yeah. yeah. And, we, and the, year be- the, the two years before that, we knew – or the year before, we knew we could play with him after that game. Yeah. Because that, yeah. that was my first game here and – it was kind of that feeling in the locker room, like we, we might have lost, but we knew, yeah, like, we, we knew, knew we had something. Yeah. Yeah. So, Peyton, for number five. My honorable mention is going to be the Missouri Valley game. That was epic. Just the way the game was close, and then Adam scoring that touchdown, breaking tackles left and right, and then as soon as he scored, we're all celebrating. It starts snowing. <laughs> that was just something. It was crazy. Basil probably liked that game too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. I told uh, I told Gray on the headset, he's like, you want me to just take a knee? And I said, no, give it to Adam. He's either going to house it or they're going to somehow stop him and we'll go to overtime. Yeah. Yeah. And that son of a gun housed it. just housed it. He was blocking a guy. I just see him take off that field. I'm like, well, we won. <laughs> There's a game. And then also he oh, stopped he a two-point conversion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that um, was crazy. I know I shouldn't do this, but another honorable mention is Baz Clear scoring the first touchdown of the season. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, was so, that was something else. And then he apologizes to Adam because Adam worked his butt to get us down there. And yeah. Baz <laughs> feels his thunder right drove, there. He drove oh. the field like 80 yards and the high school the touchdown. I was like, come on. Well, dude. Adam, we all knew Adam was going to score plenty. You know? oh, yeah, that was probably true. your one that's time. I see Baz got on the flat. I was like, oh, God. And, I, when I turned around. Did, did you trip and need to dive no, or do, were you no, just like no. I'm bad clear and no. going Superman on no it. dude I was like I was like I'm, ex- I'm we're full extension I was like full extension for the pylon yeah, I was like I'm doing it for the ladies in the stands <laughs> you mean the one lady right yeah the, the one, one lady, lady, the the one lady in the stands sorry ladies um, so my number five is Red Oak Boys basketball making the state our sophomore year I think I wasn't on the team for that, but just the boys finally making it past that hump, mm-hmm. and Hunter Gillen hitting that three to send it to overtime against Trainer. That when that shot hit, I was with Bennett Johnson. We were watching it together, was screaming, jumping up and down. <laughs> that that was just a big moment for Red Oak boys basketball in Red Oak. In and they, they had that team was was scrappy. I mean, Ryan Johnson yeah. would get about every rebound there was on the oh, floor. Yeah. Uh, 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 Johnson was just an athlete. I wish he would have shot some more. Um, Oh yeah, he's pretty good. The kid just he he was an athlete. You know, Max and Hunter they could they could shoot the lights out. Yeah. You know, Baylor Bergeron. You know, be laying the point. And then Brad. 
Yeah, and yeah, you got Luke, hurt, but lose Brad. Yeah. I mean, you think about if they still had him. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that just adds to that. He's a good defender. Yeah. You know, uh, did Baylor play on that team too? He, yeah, he, he just got, got some, he just got he, hurt. He got injured the first half of the year, and then Brad was out the second, second half. half. Yeah, because yeah, yep. he broke his collarbone in the Jamboree. playing Jamboree. 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 Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that was a. They were a, a scrappy. Scra- yeah. And I mean, you get some big. You get a big win over Trainer, and then a huge win over Van Meter. Oh yeah. Watching their faces after beating Van Meter. Ew. That oh, student it's... section was jumping. Oh yeah, it was. that was the student yeah, section. Yeah. They had their like, they had their freaking country camo student section, and we were hooting and hollering at them. Oh, we yeah. let them know that we were there. That I was... love how they put them like right, by right. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that was the way it was supposed to be. Yeah, I think we were, they too. chose. We went to that game together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you guys to... had to stop the student yeah. section from yeah. Yeah. running on the yeah, court. <laughs> Mr. Erickson's like, hey, go out there and stop them from running on the court. And I'm just like. And then there goes Julie Fowles. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great because yeah. we needed her out there. Yeah, I wasn't so. allowed at that game. I was banned from all sporting events for a month. Yeah, you and Cole's activities. Yeah, that was our activities <laughs> down south. You know? you know, you do those little extraculars sometimes. Hey, sometimes we're allowed happen. to go to state, though, and we... We popped off there. Oh, yeah. Blackout. <laughs> oh, was that the cowboy hat? Yeah, that was me and you in the cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. You and him both good. in the cowboy hat? Oh, yeah. One hat? Yep. Two dudes, one hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like this episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, here's your 13. Now. Right, All right, uh, Brando, we got number four. Peyton stole mine. I had the, the boys win versus Trainer. Just that win. Mm-hmm. That win. I was, I was sitting with Freddie Torres and Ty Jenkins and... Freddie jumped up, threw me off the threw me off the bleachers <laughs> when he hit that shot. But it was how Freddie lost like sixty pounds. Before yeah, that I don't happened. know. He put all his strength <laughs> threw, me, threw me off the bleachers. I was like, Freddie, what the hell? <laughs> Freddie, what you the you hell? still talk to Freddie? I do talk to Freddie sometimes. What's he up to? He uh, you know, Iowa Western. Iowa Western yeah, okay. he he comes he comes like uh, to Red Oak sometimes. Usually on break, but we we hop on the game sometimes. You know, they have a special There's, connection. But, they have to talk. There's a that's he's one of those kids that like didn't go out and then he comes out and starts to tackle for us the whole mm-hmm. season maybe sixty pounds underweight mm-hmm. for that position oh, yeah. and Couple he just worked his, his butt off was for us. pretty good yeah I mean yeah. he just worked that's his butt off was. for us yeah you know his that, butt work was because he was phenomenal. pretty quick you can you can play if you just work hard that's yeah. why that's that hard work beats talent yeah you, know, you just yeah. gotta just we, gotta work we hard. did have bigger dudes on the team but. He worked. He worked. He, his butt. Well, yeah. and he rarely ever gave up the inside. Yeah. So he chased everybody outside, and so it either left a gap for Riley to bounce back, or if it was a pass, he'd just keep running them. Just out run them out of there. Yeah. So that's hey, he did his job. That's yeah. what all he asked for. Oh, he could have kept some weight on, but, but hey, I he, he felt better about himself. And yeah. He was probably better, healthier, and, and yeah. Yeah, good old Freddie. Got to love that mm-hmm. kid. What do you got, Bass? Expanding on the 21-22 boys basketball season. You guys, <laughs> basketball boys, you should be excited about this, you know. Coach Plank is also, I already said, Nordine and Podlisker are both two of the best coaches that have ever come through the program, come through Red Oak. But I think Plank is, is in there for an argument because – he turned that boys' basketball program around yeah. Yeah. in two years. In a short time, In yes. two years. I mean, like, it was crazy what he did. I mean, just, I don't know what it was, because obviously I didn't play basketball, but. They put in some work. They put some oh, work. Yeah, they put some work. Built, some I think he put a good a good discipline in them. There was yeah. a good, it was a real discipline in fundamental basketball. And mm. I think they I think they played his offense well. And Helped him to his team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. the biggest thing. It's what, yeah. That culture, that standard. I like it. And they broke the, that like twenty year drought, that twenty one year drought or something like that. For the state, the playoff state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So if people don't remember, or it just hasn't been mentioned. The game before trainer was Underwood. Was Underwood. They lost. Bef- they lost and before that. Two, yeah. This is two years ago. The Underwood team that they beat now just went undefeated this year. Mm-hmm. It was a pretty darn good team. Yeah, they're all. So it's a big hump just to get that win at yeah. trainer in a game. Place we haven't historically yeah. played well. Was yeah, it, and then just the next just big run of games was the ones was that everyone story. remembers. It was. Yeah. It was a definitely story. story. So. My number four, I got. I was kind of debating between this at four or three, but beating Shan on our homecoming. I mean, it deserves to be higher, but these next three are amazing. But just beating Shan is amazing, but also beating him on a homecoming yeah. is and in front shut, of our crowd, and shutting them out. Shutting them out. That was that probably was one of the bigger crowds I've ever seen. Oh, at, people lining up around the fence. Oh yeah, that was. Yeah. 
it's my it's the picture it's my screensaver I yep. believe on my computer. But it used to be Bennett Johnson's car, but <laughs> I put that on my freshman year and I never took it off. You know, proud of number twenty one. Number twenty one out there. No, it's always fun beating that team down south. Oh, yeah, lost that trophy this year, but you know we'll get it back for us. Get it back for us. Rando. Number three. Trace. The win versus Shan in twenty twenty one. When, Probably the same one. Uh -uh. Oh, no, no the first, uh, so when Nick Fouts was oh, a senior. That one was. That's the Riley 99 interception. Yep, yep. The whole. Oh, the, the, the foot race. Dawson's, <laughs> the Dawson's, <laughs> Dawson's block against Nolan Mount. Yep, yeah. yep. Nolan Mount got a little upset about that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. Dawson, Dawson but, blocked Nolan Mount. There is an amazing good, picture of Nick Fouts holding yeah. up a touchdown, and you can see Jack Schmeckke. Running in the end zone. And yeah. Oh, and oh you Jack, so oh, Jack <laughs> smiled at him. Jack smiled. smiled. He did smile. But, uh, I don't know. The impact of that game was crazy because we hadn't beat Shannon in a while. Mm -hmm. And just like sometimes just how much they talk and all that stuff, all the noise you hear, and we go in there on their homecoming, beat them. It was just a good feeling. Because yeah. the down. year before we lost, I think, I don't know what it was. We, we only scored seven points on them. It was, not, it was not It was not good at all. And we then, were, what were we down by when it half? Oh, 13 nothing. 13 7. 13 7. No, I, like, I don't think we scored. Then we outscored yeah, them. We did. Yeah, did we, we had one touchdown. Yep. Uh, then we outscored them because we won 33 to 4, 13 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 33 13. But. And then yeah. Nick gave us that halftime speech, and it was just everything. The flips, they just switched the, yeah. the momentum of the game. Everything just flipped. Still haven't got to ring the bell yet. Nope. Yeah. Well, you could always just drive over there and ring oh, it. Yeah. We could always just. Drive I wonder over how much. I definitely haven't done that. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> haven't done that before. I wonder how much truth there is to uh, that. Used to be Red Oaks. Ball. That that used to be Red Oaks. Bell. Right out front, I right over there. I, yeah, I was gonna say. I've heard, heard the stories. No, that used to be Red Oaks Bell. I've heard those stories. Twenty-one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Riley Feltz had a game. Yes. Mm. And then Roder came. He came in big that game too. 31-13. Yeah. So I want to say we were down 13-7. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey. Good job, Mike. I, I can't tell you what I had for lunch today, but I can tell you what <laughs> happened on Friday, September 17th, 2021. 31 unanswered points. <laughs> Beautiful. And I think it was scrapped, too. 191 yards and two touchdowns. Oh. 25 two for seven. Taps. Jack Clean. Router. Jack Clean. Jack Clean was a tackle leader that game. Jack Clean. <laughs> one tackle tackle for two loss. Two, two, that's two picks. Jack, well, if you're six foot seven. Yeah. Brandon, did you have one? Got to get one. I had a pick and a strip. Max, did you have one of the steals? We threw 14 passes in that game. Look at us. Look at us go. We ran 31. Hey, 42%. Yeah, let's talk about Josh, Jack Schmecki. Two attempts, 26 yards, and one touchdown. That's hey, getting her done. Yeah, getting her done. Only 66 receiving yards, but we we pulled it out. Austin Austin awesome Johnson, a nice catch over the oh, middle in that oh, game. Yeah, yeah a huge yeah. catch actually. This is before. All right, Baz, what do you got? We I think yeah, we got about 10 minutes left. It was the or three beating West Central Valley sophomore year. Getting that first win. That first, first dub. I think we got the game ball right over there. Want me to grab it? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> show off, show off the right world. There, isn't it? Yeah, first, first win. win. Right there. 9 3 21. Shut up. Red Oak 20, West Central Valley 0. Yep, hey, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. That was a. Uh, we would score six in the first, six in the third, and a, another touchdown in the fourth. That yeah. was. <laughs> That's the game that they had. How many rushing yards they have? Wasn't it? Was it negative? I think. They had 75 yards of total offense. One of their guys. Yeah, because they were over five. They were over five passing, 75 yards rushing. But it was just like. We shut like, them down pretty good. Just standing there on the sideline. I was just like, I was dumbfounded. That, I didn't know what to believe. That's one of those teams that uh, a school that's going to, I think, grow and be a pretty solid program because they're so close to Des Moines in the yeah. area. And it's, right. it just keeps like Waukee to Van Meter to ADM. West Central Valley is the next school to start yeah. getting those yeah. kids to move outward. Yeah. I, I can see them turning into something. But yeah, all right. Yeah, that was the start. They have of, a really nice. That was field. the start of the uh, dumping water on me. Yeah. I'm glad we kind of started going away from that. Um, <laughs> hey, you think, you that was the first time we'd ever won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, okay. All right. What do you got, Pete? I got the same as Brandon beating Shane on their homecoming. It was more of like I've never beat Shane at anything at that point, and going in there and beating him. 
was amazing. And then ha them having to have people surround the bell so we didn't mm. go ring it. <laughs> and them after the game saying we cheated and all this stuff and just them still oh, yeah. talking, but we beat them. And then my favorite part about that game was when I went in on the nose, their center kept trying to throw me. And so I threw him, he went to the ground, he got up, came at me, I threw him again. He got up and he single leg me. I was trying to wrestling, take me down with a single leg. I threw him again. It's on video. It's <laughs> one of the best videos I got of me. <laughs> Just manhandling a little shan folk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, number two. Number two was it was at Missouri Valley this year. Just, I've never been part of a, like, I'm not going to talk too bad about the refs, but they weren't in our <laughs> the face. The refs were horrible. <laughs> I'll put it out there. I'll be the one to say. <laughs> They weren't, Throw me out of here. They weren't, they weren't, I'll say it. Yeah, they weren't the best, but we were down in the fourth quarter by, I think, like two touchdowns. And then we scored, and then we recovered a fumble. And then um, we... 24, kid. And then... Just enjoying your guys' conversations. I get sucked in. I had, like, a big, I had a big two-point conversion that game, and then Adam scored that last second touchdown. Yeah. It was just a... A gritty win for sure. Talk about it, man. Hey, the fumble, man. Leroy. Did we also talk oh, about Baz getting ejected from that game? Yeah, I mean, Jim Baz got ejected. It was a uh, district two twenty four. It, it, we don't. It's a long story, it's but a, it should it should have been happened that way. No, it, but no, it's, no, it's definitely. I don't know. It it happened, and it was like two twenty four from district. Yeah, district. Yeah, when you when you play with a little. The heart on your sleeve, things like that happen. When you I, play for your brothers, yeah, I think right I, yeah, I so had a personal foul that game, so um, you know, one through. more. I, I kept my mouth you shut. You got a for funny a story about <laughs> me picking you off the pile. <laughs> oh, dude, Brando ripped me off the pile, and I thought it was a guy from Missouri Valley. And I looked back, and I saw it was Brando. I just got him walk off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. oh. Where are we at? Badge, you got number two? That was mine, was All Missouri right. Valley. Peyton, number yeah. two? This was a hard either putting out one or two, but I'm going to put it at two. Dawson Bond winning state. Yeah. Come on. I'll, I'll be honest. I cried. I cried. Yeah. <laughs> bawled my eyes out. Bawled my eyes out. Because no one deserves a ball. So you know. our tickets for that game were on this section, and he rested on the clear other end. Yep. And I, because my knee was hurt and I had my crutches and knee brace and everything, I pulled it off and sat in the handicap section over where he was wrestling. And when he won, I started jumping up and down, running around. <laughs> no one comes out of the tunnel because he was hiding in the tunnel watching. We're hugging each other and crying. And j oh, it was just amazing. No, uh, wasn't the lady, there was a lady standing yeah, there watching. The she stand, got mad at you. Yeah, she was standing there watching. She's like, oh, okay, you actually can sit here. I get up, start jumping around, running around. I was like. Yeah, the best part of that was him saying, like, you know, this isn't, this isn't the, the pinnacle, right? right. It's, yeah. it's just part of the process. I mean, that, the mindset of that kid is, is amazing. I was hoping he would have thrown pot, but uh, the jumping, <laughs> yeah. jumping his arms was just as good. I was, I was waiting for the throw. Yeah. I was too. I was like, oh man, do you see what's his face from uh, Not All Valley? Throw Ashton Honnold. Yeah, yeah. So his dad is. Ah! That was <laughs> like, that's great. That's got to be amazing to have your dad as a coach oh, yeah. and winning state and as a oh, yeah, hate it too. That's a love. His brother oh, yeah. won it too. That, AAU state. His brother that's really. Good. And yeah, having your dad as a wrestling coach, I bet that's, like, that's rougher than most sports because he's going to hands oh, yeah, on. He's, yeah, <laughs> he's a sophomore, too. Yeah. Three? Maybe three of them. I'll say Red that. Oak. Red Oak, like, all of Red Oak was behind Dawson on that win. Oh, we yeah. were all watching. We were there. We were oh, you wanted way. for the community. If you, oh, yeah. I mean, if you weren't there, you were watching. Oh, oh yeah. you were watching. Absolutely. I know there, everybody was watching. Everybody was Because everyone knows that. how hard he works for that. And, yeah. yeah. He was just in the waiting room this morning. Part of the breakfast club. He was here. Was there live and... I think I was sitting next to a friend of the program, Coleman Mullinex, and there's this lady in front of us, and I'm like, I'm not crying, Coleman, you're, cl you're crying. <laughs> and she just, like, leans back and goes, yep, I get it. Because you're good. Then he runs up into the stands, yeah. and you hear him crying and, like, sobbing in his yeah. mom's arms. It was like, dang it, that's what yeah. That's what it's me. all about. It's so like, it was the coolest the thing. The was there. It was, yeah. Yeah, it you was... get the twins, and that was awesome. And then... There was also a part of that where somebody gave up their seats. Somebody had seats that was closer to the two-way mat, and his parents were sitting over there where, like, the rest of our group was, over by the yeah, three-way mat. Yes. Yeah. And they gave up, so whoever that was, it, I know it was a Red Oak group, gave up their seats so that his mm. family could move Down. over nice. and watch right over there. So. Yeah. Nice. I know that happened. So whoever that was, that's a shout-out to you. Yeah. I know that happened. Well, and his mm. sister... 
she's inching yeah, towards that, yeah, that too. Yeah. I mean, next year she'll be a senior. Um, I mean, she she's a heck of a wrestler too. And so Brody Bonds a senior. Next and Brody, year. Brody, I, I heard a, I heard a rumor. Yeah. I don't know how true it is, but we might have him padding up next year. But we'll just, yeah. another you know, I don't know if I should put him on blast like that. Oh, yeah. But uh, a little uh, out pressure. There. Brody. Brody Brody. 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 So, all right, what do we got? Oh, number ones. Number one. Number one. The win against Clark, my sophomore year, and Noreen, like Noreen's speech, David and Goliath. No, no speech has hit me like that as a player, and I had, I had a pretty big play. So for me, it's number one. They were ranked, I think, ninth. Yeah, they were not, ranked, and we were not ranked at all. We were, and that that was to like help us get to the playoffs for yeah. the first time in a yeah we a long time. Forgot about that one. We go, though we didn't make it that week, but we needed when we lost to Clorinda, DMC helped us out. Or no, yeah. Shan helped Shan us out. Shan helped by, us out because uh, they made DMC. Um, DMC. DMC. I, sh- I meant to send them flowers for that, but <laughs> yeah. I just forgot. Yeah. They have 15, so that was a knockout, uh, drag out. Just, yeah, battle. defense. We were up 6 0 at half. They went up 7 to 6. We went up 9 to 7, and then we scored again late. That's when Max DeVries led that huge drive. We didn't score. No. But he drove us all the way down the field, burnt up. I mean, we burnt up half the fourth quarter. Yeah, what a guy. Um, what a guy. Held him under 200 yards. Should have stuck with it. Should have stuck with it. But then we got redder. That was back when I was calling defense, you know. Yeah. Shut folks down. I remember watching Chase Hanholm that whole game. Yeah. Oh, he was. Chase had a day that day. He did. And Chase, Stopping the run was and we I'm put him on Budiger, and yeah. Budiger's like six foot seven. Chase is like five five, <laughs> and Chase is just out there ankle biting yeah, up. Sam Holm, we put yeah, him on. We're talking to we Sam Holm. Holm. We, also, we put. Uh, That's why you put wrestlers on defense. <laughs> yep. We had, and who was that one? Uh, number six on their team. Uh, uh Bullis. Bullis. Candace Bullis. Yeah. Our, what has, was what the what was the height difference? What did we hold them to? Receiving. Ninety. Bullis had seven yards, and he's a he was a good receiver. Mm-hmm. Showers had 30. Said the other dude, Buddinger, Buddinger he, Budenhagen, Budenhagen. He only had, he didn't even have one catch. Yeah. He had one carry for zero yards. We shut those boys down. That, was that Dale team. Showers though, they worked him to a bone. Mm-hmm. They just kept yeah. running. They remember they kept running that uh, sweep yeah. Yeah. to Chase aside, and Chase just Chase popped is... him in the shins every single time. But that's not a bad day though. 18 for 83. I'll give him that. That's, not, that's a pretty good day. Another two catches, 37. That Cooley kid was a good quarterback. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Baz, what do you got? Number one for Baz. I, I got Dawson, too, but, like, being on the mat. It's a little different for you because, I mean, you you were his warm-up partner. Yeah, yeah. okay, guy. so I warmed him up, which that's just, like, crazy cool anyways. You get to see all the guys that you know from Freestyle and Greco and everything, and, like, you get to be down there and see, like, Ben Keeter and, like, Gabe Arnold <laughs> and all these guys. You're just walking past him, and you need whatever, I guess. Um, but, like, after he ran over to Pod, I was like, I was I was going so nuts, I'm sure he had to have heard me. Me and Adam and Kyler, but we, I, I don't think I ever jumped that high in my life. <laughs> and I was just screaming, and you can hear it on the flow, on the flow, and that guy's like, the Red Oak kids behind us are going Yeah, bonkers. I remember listening to him. And we were just jumping and screaming. And he came over and he gave us all three a hug. And we're all crying. All three of us are crying. And then he runs up into the stands and yeah. it's just crazy. And I don't yeah. know. I broke my hand, I guess. I don't even know what happened <laughs> but you, there. But you wrestled through it. But, hey, I yeah, warmed him up for the finals. So. Yeah. Uh, but Pod yeah. wrestled him live. So I give him the credit for the for the live yeah. match. So yeah, give man. Pod credit. That's, uh, yeah. That, and one of the coolest things I've been around. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen other state championships, my, um, but that, I mean, Dawson is just a special kid. Yep, worked for it. Number one. I don't know why you guys put this so low, but number one for me is ending the streak. We ended it, and I just think you coming in our sophomore year and us finally getting a win changed the whole program, mm-hmm. changed everyone's mindset on football. We got more people coming out the next year, and it just it helped so much with – everything in that aspect of football and it was just wild game the amount of kids that were trying yeah. to come out after yeah one oh yeah it was crazy it's just, it was it was crazy. just i mean and that just shows winning changes things yeah oh yeah um you know yeah that was, that was a a fun night i yeah. i wish we could have got it i was after week one i you know how i stressed myself out and i was like man we should have got week one we got week two so kind of kind of put yeah, it down a little. i think it was a little more stressful that that four weeks of not getting scored on 
Because I was like, just oh, somebody yeah. score Someone on just score us. Like, just I, I get this over with. And then we then we get through week three, and we have to play week four, which is Shan. And I'm like, okay, we yeah, can't have score. them score on us. we got to have somebody DMC else. DMC was a hard so, game. Yeah, I think that was. Rain. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, but, you got to love that. They'll, they'll spitting all night on us. The funny thing about this being my number one is after the game, I wasn't jumping around in the huddle with you guys in the locker room. I was sitting in the corner crying, upset at myself, because I played one snap that game. When Luke's helmet fell off, like it did every game, played one snap that game and I got a holding call. Because <laughs> I pancaked it. I do the remember kid, that. And they I actually remember that play. Oh, I, I remember I, that. I was screaming that at the ref that was a pancake. But when we went, when, when I was screaming at the ref that that was a pancake, but I think we walked, went back and watched the film and you might have been a little bit of a I'll still pour the syrup <laughs> on it. <laughs> but yeah, but that's that. number one. In I, my I think I yelled, uh, don't be mad just because he's pancaking him or something. I don't know. I forget what I say half the time. So. Uh, yeah, those are some solid lists. Uh, I think we'll, we will have a poll, so make sure you, you paid attention. Uh, if you guys want to zip through your top five one more time so they can remember what you had. Brando, what did you have? Five was watching the boys compete at state track. Uh, the boys basketball win versus trainer. Uh, beating Shan at their homecoming, 2021. Um, the win against Missouri Valley this year, and then the win against Clark in Oregon Speech, David and Goliath. Nazareth? Honorable mention was the Southwest Valley and Trainer Games. Um, number five was starting 4-0. Um, number four was 21-22 boys basketball state run. Number three was beating West Central Valley sophomore year for me. And then number two was Missouri Valley Games senior year. Number one was Dawson Bond winning state. My honorable mention was the Missouri Valley game this year. My number five was Red Oak, boys making this, Red Oak basketball boys making the state our sophomore year. Number four was beating Shan on homecoming. Number three was beating Shan on their homecoming. Number two was Dawson Bond winning state. And number one was ending the streak. Nice. The only two I would add would be the Creston versus Red Oak baseball game last year here. We just what talked it? about it the other oh, day. Dawson that? threw a two-hitter yeah. shutout, and, and Turner sure. throws a three-hitter. When Dawson scored, he drives in the one, one run. It was a one nothing game. One Dawson had ten strikeouts. Um, the whole team played an amazing, amazing. Yeah. I mean, seven solid innings. Yeah. Um, that would be that would be something I would add in that I thought was pretty special. Um, my my three years here, um, and then uh, the one moment in, in, in football practice uh, where we had the the hunter squirrel boy, uh, <laughs> uh, squirrel nuts rotor. Um, you know, he's a hunter and and. Uh, he uh, got the job done during practice too, yep. so uh, that'd be something too I would add. Kip, you got any you differently? Um, football standpoint, those stick out. We're, Justin McCunn, senior year. What grade were you guys? We were all eighth. We were, eight. we were eighth grade, so you were in the building. <laughs> <laughs> I said four years. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> these guys will remember it. He did three sports in three days. Oh yeah, mm. yes. Dude. He, re- he like got top ten in a cross country meet on a Thursday. Yep. Went up against the Miller Oscar kid, kid, Green, Green, uh, Miller, was it Miller? From Red Oak? No. Or from uh, Ballard? Green, Green County. We even played a football game oh. in Green County, and he oh, played, like, he played guard. Left ta- left ta- oh, he played, like, Miller. guard for us. Miller, yeah, 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 the, the tackle. And then him and Pod left to go to Night of Conflict in for Waterloo Saturday. on Saturday, <laughs> and he won his match. Yeah. He was that. So he did, like, three all-state level things in three days, which... There was that girl from Forest cool. City this year. That oh, yeah. they had a family friend that had a plane, and they flew so she her. ran yeah. to the cross country meet. Then they flew her to her volleyball game that mm-hmm. night. Like, hey, friends in high because places, wasn't it right? A game to go to state for volleyball. Yes, I believe yeah. so. Because I think it was state mm-hmm. cross country than that, or something. Yeah. There were two big events. Yeah, uh, and she went to do that. So that I don't know, the Fink kid, he bowls a three hundred in bowling mm-hmm. that night. He goes and scores twenty in a basketball game mm-hmm. for for Denison. So. Three hundred might be more present. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. but you do the same thing within yeah twelve hour time frame. So yeah, so that was one of mine. Uh, There's a run we made state three years in a row. I got a, an award. It's for one of them, the Sportsmanship Award. So that was kind of cool from my point of view. Uh, Clay DeVries' senior year, she dual sport in the fall. And went to state in both. Nice. That was pretty cool. Cross yeah. country and volleyball. And that was the volleyball year. They kind of they lost the, the Walker, Ringsdorf, West, mm-hmm. Johnson, that big good senior class. So it was kind of like the rebuilding year, but they still made the state. Mm-hmm. It was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, though. And then Sophie Walker, if it wasn't for COVID, would have went to state in four sports. That's amazing. It was 
volleyball, basketball, would have made it in track. And she was like number one tennis. Oh, yeah. Forreston was likely going to go to state. But then, then COVID, uh, COVID, COVID, COVID everything. Yeah. Screwed a lot of things up. A lot of things up. I have yeah. one more. I have one more. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was against Shan when Garrett Cow stole home. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. Oh, yes, dude. <laughs> I do remember that. that, remember was, that. Yeah, dude, was I was just great. watching, looking at, the, like, they, he was pitching. I don't know who it was pitching, but. I just see freaking Garrett Cowles just get in his stance <laughs> and start taking off. And you, you know he's fast. And he oh, yeah, he's fast. Oh, yeah. Slid in a home. I and forgot it was, all about it that. Was, I forgot about that, too. It was insane. It was like, it was crazy. <laughs> did it get past – did it get past – the catcher, what? How did he? Something else happened that game. No, it was he beat it. To he home. just beat he it. Just home. But didn't uh, <laughs> there was a drop strike three man on first, and it was the third out. But it, that they took off to run off the field, mm-hmm. and you guys kept running because it's not. Yeah. It's not a drop ball third strike, right? On, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, on the on the third out. Yeah. Um, that, that was Gary Cuss's second time doing that in his career. <laughs> he did it against Atlantic two years earlier, I think, or if not the year before. And the guy just airmailed it and threw it to the back of the net. Because he just freaked yeah. out. So he'd done it before, and like, I'm doing the iPad, so I'm like in the game. I didn't even know you were doing it. I wasn't even watching him and <laughs> like, Erickson talk. It. It yeah, I just see him take off. I'm like, gone. Like, there was another kid, Stover. He ended up playing at NDSU. He played for CMB, which is in central Iowa. He stole home, slid through the guy's legs that was up to bat mm. to send their team to state. Wow. Literally had, he had three hits. Their team had three hits. He stole like six bases. Like, he did everything, pitched the game, but then they went to state, he pitched the first round, they won, and then the second round they just got annihilated because that's all they had. Yeah. He was he was. Garrett's still home. Aaron Schmidt has a sweet video from up by the football press box. He'd get stressed out, so he'd go up there, so it was <laughs> behind him, But he was videotaping it like, as it happened, so it's what, really sweet. Was he wearing video. his matching baseball shirt and shorts? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just his Tiger baseball jersey. <laughs> but mm-hmm. shout out Aaron Schmidt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... Well, boys, I think we went uh, well over time. I hope people don't uh, cut this episode short when they're listening to it because, you know, we, uh, we bring the fire all the time. Yeah, all um, the I just want to end. I, I really appreciate you guys coming. Kip, appreciate you always being here for me. Um, know you guys. I love you so much. Um, I'd do anything for you. Uh, I'm not going to say you're my favorites because everybody's my favorite. And, you know, I hope you guys do amazing things, which I know you will in life. So thank you. Can we put another poll out there? What's that? We have the Mama oh, Spank special. We, this is another poll. <laughs> Who would win in an Oklahoma drill, Mama Spank or Coach Gray? I'm going oh, out there. I'm going to say Mama Spank, but it's Coach Gray is, is pretty short. So, so low man wins. Okay, I'm going to just put it out. Coach Gray is my enemy, all right? You guys, <laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you, guys, you guys know this. You guys know this. But I'm just saying, Coach Gray in the in the one hole, Mama Spank is going to bed. Because he was a, a good oh, yeah. running back. I oh, yeah. but it's a, let's see what happens. She said this. I don't know, like, though. She played college running back. She's like, I don't care. Mama, I'm yeah, Mama Spank. She hooked us up with some pork chops. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, oh, man. That was the best coach's meal we had all year. Well, I feel I, like, actually, it was the only coach's meal we had all year, but it was solid. I feel like Okay, she let me give you crap. a – I have a poll because we didn't get to discuss it. All right? D3, NAI, or JUCO? JUCO. And it yeah. matters what you're going to, yeah. to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. JUCO, JUCO you're, you, if you're looking to go to the next level, because I feel like JUCO's changed to where it is. Like, uh, yeah, you're either yeah. going to the next level. When I played JUCO, it was, there was a mixture of kids that, that wanted to just play a couple more years, and then now it's all the kids just, well, they want to get to the next level, want to get to the next level. I think, I the think competition at all three levels oh, is, all three levels just, yeah. is Good, solid, yeah. solid. Um, the downfall to D3 is the cost, but the positive to that is they've worked some magic and they, get some scholarship. They know money. what money is. Um, the JUCO and NAIA, I think the, the getting that money um, yeah. for athletics is is just as good, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll give it Iowa, Iowa Western, national champs. Morningside, Northwestern, recent oh, national yeah. champs. Uh, Warburg made it to the semifinals. Yep. Uh, you play in these lower levels in Iowa, it's, I think it's completely different. Uh, yeah. It's it just, you got dogs. You got dogs. Mm-hmm. No, no. And South Dakota State right now is killing it. And yeah. They're so close. They got tons of Iowa kids on there, too. You look at those. Mm-hmm. Ad- we had the con- one double A to me still, you know. Um, that whole Dakota, Dakota area. You and I, they're. 
every I single 29. year. Every single year. I-29, like you, know? you said. Well, look at the Division Three wrestling. It yeah. was Warburg, Coe, Loris, and Luther, and then North Central. Well, there's Augustburg. So there's four. There's, like, Augustburg that's in that. Augustburg and Warburg are, like, they're, like, they're, like, real close rivals. I know that. If you yeah. also look but at Juco wrestling, like Iowa Central was yeah. number one yeah. last I saw. Iowa Western had a couple national champs, CJ. including CJ Carter. Yeah. And it's just, so, I mean, it's, it's, they're just good athletes oh, all around. Like, I've Western's always said, once you're going to find track. talent yeah. anywhere, you know? Yeah. And it's... And Iowa's come getting on the map. I mean, we had yeah. Proctor last year. Yeah. I mean, we got some t- Nawampa the year Nwampa. before. Gene, Gene. I mean, we got Peter, some. Peter. I mean, we, we got. Hey, Alex. Watch out for Iowa. Man. Hey, Alex getting his legs hey, nowadays, I'll, dude. I'll end this on, is Iowa the next Texas football state? Yes. Hey, we'll see you next time. What is it? What is it? Thanks, guys.